Hi there, welcome to another video of Prof. Paul B. Today we're going to be uh, using NetBeans 11.2 to create a very simple application uh, to uh, display uh, students. And we're actually going to create a student object and we're going to create a student class, I should say. And we're going to create instances of that class and store them in an array. And then we're actually going to display them uh, as well. Okay, so let's get started. First thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to create a brand new project here. And I'm actually going to use Java with Ant. And I'm going to call this one student list. And here we go. We're going to click on finish. We're going to actually create the main class called student list. And let's go ahead and finish that. And now we have our project. And my main class opened up down there. Let's bring it up here. Okay. So here's our, our main class with our main method. And now what I'm going to do is, well, might as well just this class is a simple example uh, of creating arrays of objects. Okay. So now I'm going to go into my project and I'm going to expand the source packages. And I'm actually going to right click on student list and I'm going to create a new Java class. And I'm going to call this student, capital S. We have to, our naming conventions are proper. And we're going to, we're going to leave it in the same package for now. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to create a very, very simple class. And all it's going to have is just a name. So this class represents student, students in our application. Okay, so here's our class student. I can go ahead and move this over a little bit. All I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a private uh, data field called name. And obviously we need a type. So private string name. And here what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use the um, the keyboard shortcuts to create a constructor and getters and setters for this uh, uh, attribute. So I'm going to go ahead and right click, insert code. And well, sure, I'll do my constructor first, passing in the name. And I'm also going to right click again. And I'm going to insert code once more. And this time I'm going to do getter and setter. And I'm going to select the name and click on generate. If you click on encapsulate fields, basically what it will do is it will put the uh, name data field as private. We've already done that, so we don't have to we don't have to do that. Okay, so there's our very simple student class. Um, you know, one data field, attribute property, uh, and uh, one constructor passing in that data field, the name, and also getter and setter for the name. Okay, so now let's go back to our student list class and let's actually here we're going to create an array of student objects. So how do we do that? Well, we declare the type and usually when you're declaring an array, it's a good idea to use the plural of what your array is holding. So let's go ahead and call this students is equal to um, new student. And here let's go ahead and specify I'll just specify two. Uh, so our array of students has two, and let me just see, student, uh, <laughs> I forgot to specify that my students is an array and not, is not just a, sim a simple student. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, just loop and ask the user to enter names and we'll create our student objects that way and we'll insert them into the array. So let's go ahead and create a for loop for int i is equal to zero. i is less than students dot length and i plus plus. And so now we're going to, um, well, we have to declare a scanner. Let's go ahead and do that up here. I don't want to declare my scanner in the loop. Uh, scanner, I'm just going to call it input is equal to new scanner and let's go ahead and do system dot in to look to get our input from the keyboard and oh, let's go ahead and import that 
and we see we added the import for the scanner so now let's come back down here in our for loop and now what we're going to do is we're going to do string name is equal to input dot next line and we're going to create a new instance of student is equal to new student and we're going to pass in the name okay so there's our new student and now what we're going to do is we're actually going to uh, add that student let me just put these two together now we're going to add that student into our the ith element of the array so students i is equal to um, student there we go okay so we're, we're here we're setting the ith element of the array to be that student that we just created here okay and now what we're going to do is we're actually going to loop through this array and simply display the the students names okay so let's go ahead and do that so here notice i used a for int i construct uh, to loop through i'm actually going to use a for each so here's the for each construct so i'm going to say for each student student in students so what am i going to do for each one, I'm actually going to do a, um, let me just do a, uh, let me create a format string. Um, I'll create this format string outside, outside my loop. It doesn't make a difference. The compiler takes care of that for us, but it's not going to recreate the string every time. But let's it just looks a little bit nicer here. Format. And here we're just going to go, um, is equal to, the student's name is, and then we're going to do percent %s. And now we're going to go inside of here. And let me just go ahead and add a new line character after that. And I'm actually going to do a SOUT, system.out.println. And I'm going to do printing the students. And now what I'm going to do, I'm going to do very simple um, uh, system dot out. No, I'm just going to do S O U T, but I don't want the print line. I actually want the print F. And um, I might, the first parameter is my format string. And my second parameter is student dot. And here we're going to call the get name method. Okay. So that's our that's our program. Um, let's take a look at it. Let's see if I can. Oops, there we go. So here, what we're doing, we're just creating an array of students. Uh, that we'll hold two students, and then we're looping through. I've created a for loop to to create as many students as our array can handle, and we're asking the user for the name. We're creating the instance of the student, passing in. The string that the user entered and then we're setting the ith element of the array to be that student that we just created okay uh, when you create an array it will initialize the values of the array and for object types uh, they will be initialized to null and so let's go ahead and run this let me open up my output and let's go ahead and save and run And wait. <laughs> Sometimes it takes a little while. Is there something I didn't do right? Hmm. Usually it doesn't take this long. So, oh, no prompt. Okay, <laughs> I'll, I'll change that. <laughs> okay, so the first one is Bugs Bunny, and the second one I'm going to do is Daffy Duck. And then we see that, yeah, our program did run. And we see that uh, the student's name is Bugs Bunny, and then the other student's name is Daffy Duck. So let me go ahead and add a prompt here, because I kind of sat there wondering what was going on. I thought it was in the uh, infinite loop there for a second. Enter the student's name. There we go. OK, let's just run this one more time for the sake of completeness. 
and let me clear that and run this. So enter the student's name. So we'll just do the first name. We'll do Bugs and we'll do Daffy. And then we see we they worked up very simply. Okay, so here we have it as we have a very simple program with two classes, student class, which has uh, one private data field called name and uh, has the constructor, has a getter and setter. And we also have another class, uh, which is our main class that has the main method that creates an array of students and then loops through the number of times, uh, number of elements in that array and ask the user for a student name. We get it, we create a new instance of the student by invoking the new student, invoking the constructor, the one argument constructor. And then we're setting the ith element to be student, the one that we just created up here in line 25. Then we're just gonna do print out, we're printing it out, create a very simple format string. And here we're using the for each uh, statement to actually uh, loop through the array. So that you, this is how you read this for each student in the, the colon, you read that as in, for each student in students, I want you to do this. So here's the variable that we're gonna be able to access within the loop. Uh, so what we do is we just basically do a system.out.printf, passing in our format string, which we declared right here. And then also what we're going to do is we're calling the student.getName to print out the name. And this is the result that we have is it prints out very nicely. Okay, so that's it for this video, a uh, very simple video. Uh, we're just kind of getting warmed up with some Java stuff, that's okay. And I uh, hope you enjoyed. If you did, uh, we'll talk to you soon. Thanks.